Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Friday Gear Show. Today's gear show is coming at you from Outdoor, the yearly trade show where the climbing industry shows off the newest and shiniest gear that's coming out in the next year. Now we've been wandering around this massive climbing show for about three days now and what's become really clear to us is that this year it's all about climbing shoes. So on today's show we're going to show you our top three slash four climbing shoes uh, from this year's outdoor and a little bit extra of something pretty special. So the slash four of the climbing shoes on display here at Outdoor are the ones from Black Diamond. Now they've invented their own shoes and their own rubber and that's kind of too much to include in this show. So we've got a whole another climbing daily show about the new Black Diamond shoes coming soon or it's already happened. I, I don't know man, give us a break. Uh, anyway, here's 510 shoes. So here we are, 510. Let's talk about the Anastasi range. Now, I used to wear the Anastasi VCS, and the problem I had, and I think quite a few people have, is a sort of floppy heel situation. So it would fit me really well at the front, but the heel was really baggy. That meant I had to buy the entire shoe really, really small to cram it all in, and that wasn't ideal. So I, I kind of stopped using the Anastasi VCS, even though it was really high performance, and I love stealth rubber. Bring in the Anastasi Pro. Quite a cool story behind this. Basically, the Anastasi was worn by Shauna Coxley and Ned Fahidli, the climbing couple, power extraordinaire, climbing geniuses. So Ned modified his shoe uh, by adding a rubber section to the toe area. 510 heard about this, and then they started doing it for Shauna's shoe. So they gave her a modified Anastasi shoe, and obviously she won a few World Cups off the back of it. So 510 have decided to take this concept and create a shoe as a production model with these upgrades. So as you can see with the Pro, there's a big rubber section across the toe area, so perfect for toe hooking, both indoor and outdoor. The heel, which I talked about earlier, has been improved, so it's tensioned. I tried these on in my normal size, and it felt so much better than the old model for me. Like, the heel was good, it felt cool again. The tongue has been improved a bit, so it's a bit more breathable, a bit more comfortable. What's cool about this is they're not hiking up the price hugely. I think it's currently 10 pounds more expensive than the old model. So for me, this pro upgrade gives you a lot for very little money. And of course, you get 510 Stealth Rubber, which I, C4 Rubber, which I, I, I love. It's, it's soft, it's pretty durable, and it's just so sticky. So yeah, very happy with this. Also comes in this uh, low volume model um, aims more for kind of women climbers or if you have low volume feet, so like narrow, narrow feet, you might want to check out the LV model. Excellent. Well on 510. Let's move on to more shoes. So another stand, another shoe. We are at Scarpa and you've got to check this out. This is the Furia S. Now imagine this is a bit like the Lamborghini of the climbing shoe world. It's gonna be ridiculously expensive. It's very limited in its use, but my God, do you want it? This thing is super aggressive and bonkers soft. Look at this. I have never seen a climbing shoe where I can bend the sole with very, very little effort. For this shoe, think very, very overhanging terrain, caves, uh, a lot of indoor climbing, outdoor climbing. If you try to stand on a small edge, this is gonna be rubbish. But if you wanna use your feet as hands and really hook onto those holds, this thing is gonna be a, a weapon of a shoe. New uh, Velcro system to kind of tighten it all up around your foot. It's, it's just so bonkers and ridiculous and I, I just, I quite want one. Sorry, and I just do. More shoes. Okay, so next shoe. And this one was a bit of a surprise for me. When I turned up at Outdoor this year, I had no idea that Wild Country had built and developed a prototype shoe. And I say prototype because although this is almost done, it's still a little bit away off being manufactured. So what I'm gonna show you today is nearly the shoe, but not quite. Okay, enough about talking. I'm gonna show you the shoe. So here they are, the Meshuga and the Parthian, shoes named after some really hard Peak District classics. Let's start with the Parthian, uh, lace-up model, uh, and this is the sort of the furthest shoe off being ready for production. So, well, this rather beautiful looking thing is the Meshuga. First, first up really, it is so ridiculously lightweight. I don't think I've ever picked up a shoe that feels as light as this. Starting with the obvious, Michelin rubber sole. 
Now Michelin, as we know, make car tyres, but they also make MotoGP tyres. And it's the MotoGP team who have been working on the rubber for this baby. Basically, they reckon it's like the correct friction and rubber stuff, I don't know, for this shoe. Uh, but it's the first time the Michelin have moved into this market and they're really excited to develop it with Wild Country. What's exciting about this sole is it's been injection molded rubber. So that means they can really control the thickness of the rubber throughout the shoe in one piece. So you get a nice sort of 10 mil thickness on the toe. They're really, really thin by the time you get down to the heel. This level of precision and control is sort of what you'd expect from like a, a motorbike tire. And it's quite cool to see it in the climbing shoe market. The outer is pretty special too. It's got three layers of different fabric over the toe and heel sections. So there's a normal outer and then an inner, but in the middle section on the toe and heel, there's a sort of a plasticky layer that helps keep the rigidity, that's a word, of the shoe together. It's not throughout the shoe because then it will be really, really sweaty. The hooks at the back, again, a little feature, but there's Kevlar within these uh, sort of tabs to pull them onto your feet on. A small feature, but I think it's pretty cool because it's not going to rip off really easily because it's Literally sort of bomb proof, really. So, yeah, this is Meshuga shoe. Uh, Will Bosi has had his hands on this. He's been climbing on in the Pink District, and I've been told that he thinks it's pretty exciting as a shoe. The price point is going to be high. I think it's about 160 euros. But what Wild Country have done is they thought, look, we can't compete necessarily with selling hundreds of different types of shoe. So what we'll do is create two really high-end, really beautifully made climbing shoes and just come in at the top of the market, which is a, an interesting idea. I'll bring you more news when we have it. So that's the shoes done. And I told you guys they'd be something a little bit extra, and here it is. So outdoor is full of new and cool products, but occasionally you get a product that is new, cool, and just genius in its simplicity. And that's what Edelrud have come up with, a way of uncoiling a new rope without getting loads of kinks and horrible little messes in it. So to explain a little bit more, here's Philippe. Philippe, so Hi, nice man. to How's see you again, man. Really, really good. Tell me a bit more about this, this wicked little idea. Yeah, okay. So what happens usually when you coil a rope in a normal way that I'm I see, you see I marked here the rope with one side. So this is how a normal coil looks like. And what happens when you uncoil the rope or when you would just pull it out is that for every turn you would twist the rope half. And this is what basically gets the kinks in the, in the rope when you mess up the uncoiling process. So what we thought is, why not just while coiling it, give it half a twist already. So this is then our coil now. This is how our coil looks. And when you just pull it out, it, you have the straight, the straight um, rope without any coils in it. Okay, so when I have my new rope, usually I have to do a whole process where I have to take it off loop by loop, lay it on the ground, do the whole thing. Exactly. And I watched you do it earlier, and you literally just pull it out exactly. of the coils now. So this is how, this is how the, the coil now looks, and we got like a little piece of the rope that's going here through a, through a little hole. And then the only thing you have to do, you arrive at the crack basically, you put it on the floor, and then you can pull it out, like this. That's so much and easier yeah. than what I usually have to do. And you get like a rope without any kinks just by pulling it out. Basically, you could tie in and just keep on climbing and I will belay you from here. You see, you, you've just invented a product, basically, that stops me looking stupid every time I get a new <laughs> rope. And I, I like that. That's a good idea. Um, so there's a, a new machine that you guys invented. Um, I basically want to play with the machine. Can we, can we see how it coils the rope in the new way? Of course, yeah. So this is the new machine that you guys invented. Exactly, yeah. Just talk me through how the rope kind of goes through it and yeah. how it works. So here, basically in the middle, you have the normal coiling mechanism. So this one coils in this direction, but at the same time for every, for every turn, it gives a twist in this direction as well. So it's basically, it looks super cool. It's like a three-dimensional thing going on in every direction. Nice, man. Well, you told us that we could film uh, from above and look down on it. So yeah. uh, I guess we're going to cut this and cut to a machine. Okay, so uh, the machine's done its spinny thing and now we have our finished coiled, ready to go rope. Exactly. Looks like a completely normal coil, but it's our 3D lap coil technique. It's called, I think now you saw why it's called 3D. And basically you could just now pull it out and then start climbing. 
Awesome, man. Well, I said at the beginning, it's like it, it's quite a simple idea, but it's just genius. It's just like it, it's a problem that is really annoying for all climbers, yeah. and you guys have sorted it out. So, cheers for that. Thank you very much, and uh, yeah, have a great show, man. You too. So there you go, three slash four cool new shoes and a little rope trick from Edelrid. Now most of those shoes you've looked at today, in fact all of them I think won't be out yet, so I can't ask you guys what you think of them, but I can ask you what you think they look like. Do they look cool? Do you think they're going to work? Which ones are you excited by? Let me know by commenting below. I'm done here at Outdoor, so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. It's so hard in China to watch your video. Really? I'm so sorry. Uh, YouTube is blocked. <laughs> I was being a bit famous there. I liked it.